What's going on, y'all? Welcome to another edition of Gen Sports Corner. Back at you for NFL Wild Card Weekend. About to go real brief into today's games. Um, I'm actually going to rush through this video because the game's about to come up and I want to get my prediction out there. So it's out there on the record. So first things first, um, shout out to all the teams that made the playoffs this year for the NFL. Um, you played hard, you did your thing, and now it's time to get down to business and see who's going to come out with that Lombardi Trophy. So first game today, 435, the Colts, Indianapolis Colts playing at the Houston Texans down there in Texas. Um, so a lot of interesting things about this game. Two teams in the same division in the AFC South. Um, you have one team, both teams are hot coming down the stretch. Both were uh, five, the Colts were five and one in their last six. Texans are four and two in their last six. And the Colts have been on fire. Looks like Andrew Luck has gotten his arm back and that offense is really taking off. Same thing with Deshaun Watson. Seems like he's had that year, um, that year uh, watermark where his, his knee has had a chance to heal up and he looks like he's back to his old self. Even though he lost to the Eagles two weeks ago, he's he easily could have won that game and he he pulled some magic out of his out of his hat, man. He's he's really a magician back there. And these two these two teams usually have tough battles whenever they play each other. Uh, the uh, Texans actually lost to the Colts in week 14, 24 to 21. So it'll be interesting to see if they've made the adjustments this time around. You have two teams that like playing a cover two shell. The Colts like playing a cover two zone, sitting back and trying to let you take the underneath stuff and make you try to beat them over the top and make a mistake. The Texans employ a similar defense. They use a, a two, te two deep cover two coverage. They just drop both safeties back. They're free and a strong safety. They try to make you beat them while playing man. So it's going to be interesting um, seeing this matchup. Andrew Luck in his two games this year against the Texans, 863 total yards, six touchdowns, been on fire. Um, you know, um, it's, it's going to be, it's going to come down to whether that front seven for the Texans can get after Andrew Luck. Is J.J. Watt and going to be able to win his one-on-ones? Is Clowney going to be a problem as they move him around the formation? I think... That could be the, the deciding factor. And in the Colts' last game, Week 17 against Tech, the um, Titans, they had a lot of fumbling issues. They were turning the ball over. And Houston, they are... I have it right here. They are elite in terms of forced fumbles. And in terms of fumble recovery. So, they're good at forcing turnovers and fumbles, and they're good at recovering. So, that could be the deciding factor here. Uh, Sean Watts... Oh, and Andrew Luck has only been sacked 18 times. That's tops in the league. You don't, one. People don't get a chance to put a hand on him. Three. And he's, you know, you don't want him sitting back there and just throwing bombs to T.Y. Hilton, who may or may not be healthy for this game due to that gimpy ankle. So that's going to be a big factor in this game. Looking at the other side, looking at Deshaun Watson, he's been sacked, I believe, a league high 62 times. Like, the Eagles got after him. Even though he put up a lot of points in that game, Eagles got after him. They put hands on him. And teams are able to get shots on him, even when they don't sack him. So, is he going to be able to hold up once that playoff intensity is ramped up in these games? I don't know. Can the Colts get to him? That Colts defense has been playing pretty well down the stretch. We saw it in the shutout win over the Cowboys. They fly around. They get to the ball. They pick the ball off, too. So, we'll, we'll see. And uh, finally, to my final point, I think the big matchup here is T.Y. Hilton versus uh, DeAndre Hopkins, who I believe is DeAndre Hopkins. I believe is the best wide receiver in the NFL right now. If you feel differently, leave it in the comments. But T.Y. Hilton has been lights out against the Texans. He's had um, 13 receptions for 314 yards this year against the Texans 
and DeAndre Hopkins, best receiver in the league. 115 receptions, 1,500 plus yards, 11 touchdowns. He's been on fire this year. Regardless of whether Deshaun has been, regardless of whether it's been a gimpy Deshaun Watson throwing to him in the first half of the year or a fully healthy Deshaun Watson throwing to him in these last six games. So he's going to be hard to cover. Both teams don't have great secondaries. So I, I think it can be a shootout. And I think it's going to come down to which offense is able to be more consistent. But, you know, if T.Y. is not 100%, is Luck going to be able to beat that cover two that the Texans like to employ over the top? I'm not so sure about that. I'm pretty sure they'd be happy to let him dink and dunk and then slowly be able to pin their ears back and get after Andrew Luck. I don't know if they're going to be able to run the ball against this third-ranked Texans rush defense. So that's going to be a crucial, crucial point in the game to, to figure out whether they're going to be able to get that done. Um, Deshaun Watson can extend the play, so he might be able to beat that Indianapolis cover two. It might break down if you're extending the play four, five, six seconds running around. So, And then he has Lamar Miller back, so that run game is going to be rejuvenated. So my prediction for this game, if T.Y. Hilton is severely limited or if he's not able to suit up, I have the Texans winning 30-21. to 21. If T.Y. Hilton is healthy enough, I have Indianapolis pulling this out 31-28. But I'm going to just go ahead and assume that T.Y. Hilton is really not up to, to strength for this game. So I'm going to go with 30-21 to 21 Houston Texans. That's my final prediction. This is 12 minutes before kickoff. 423. So I'm going to try to get this video out by kickoff. So you guys can see my thoughts and let me know what you think. So I'm on record 30-21 to 21 Houston. On to the next game tonight, the Seattle Seahawks at Jerry World playing the Dallas Cowgirls. 8-15, primetime game. Um, I forgot to mention for the Colts-Texans game, the Texans are favored by one, a total point uh, score of 48.5. So the odds makers are predicting that the Texans win on average 25 to 24 that's about the average score so we'll see so the uh, line spread for the uh, Seahawks Cowboys game is Dallas by two the total uh, points uh, point score the points total is 43 points and the predicted score is 22 and a half to 20 and a half. let's just say 23 to 21 Dallas okay they have Dallas winning by two now you have this is a very interesting matchup because you have two teams that have gotten hat gotten hot down the stretch, both five and one in the last six games. Uh, the point differential is what really stands out to me. Whereas Dallas has won a lot of close games, they have a fifteen a plus fifteen point differential in terms of point score versus points that have been scored against them. Whereas the Seahawks this season have an 80 plus 81 point differential which is up there it's really up there and in their last six games Dallas's point differential has only been plus two which means they've been winning a lot of close games i.e you can just look at the game that they won against the Eagles which was down to the wire in overtime and then the blowout loss that they had to the aforementioned Indianapolis Colts but you look at Seahawks, their point differential in their last six games is plus 51. So that means they've been stepping up their game. Their point differential in the first 10 games was plus 30. But their point differential in the last six down the stretch has been plus 51, which means they've been turning up the heat. And Russell Wilson has most most likely been really turn, going into MVP mode. Not that he'll win it, but he's been in the conversation. Uh, the Cowboys, ironically, in the first 10 games, their their point differential was plus 13. So it was actually slightly less in their last six games. So that doesn't tell the whole story, but it gives you a good, pretty good picture um, how each team has been playing down the stretch and 
how they've been beating their opponents, just not that they've been beating their opponents. And another thing is the turnover differential. Dallas is plus three in that category, which is mm, it's okay. Whereas Seattle is plus 15 in the turnover differential, meaning they have 15 more takeaways. They've taken the ball away 15 more times than they've given it away compared to Dallas having 20 takeaways and only uh, but still giving the ball away 17 times. So that those stats are the ones that tend to stick out to me. Yes, I do look at the stats such as total offense and total defense and how many sacks there are and how many um, how many rushing pass yards that each team is getting and giving up. But like the, the turnover di- differential and the point differential, those are the things that I think can tell you how a team is going to respond and perform from week to week. So, in my eyes, I'm looking at this game, I see two good defenses. Seahawks having a number 11th ranked defense, the Cowboys having a number 6 ranked defense. Um, Cowboys only giving up 20, 20.3 points a game, Seahawks giving up 21.7 points a game. Cowboys only scoring 21.2 points a game and the Seahawks scoring 26.8 points per game. They have the number one ranked rushing attack in the NFL. And that's a big part of that is because of Russell Wilson and that read option. And they scored 15 touchdowns, which is a hell of a lot. Um, And they passed for 37. He's passed. Russell Wilson has passed for 37 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. That is phenomenal. You look at the Cowboys. Dak's only thrown eight interceptions, but he's only thrown 22 touchdowns. Like he's he's a solid quarterback, but I'm not so sure that without the running game that he can make things happen on his own. Um, we saw him do that against the Giants this past week, but it's the Giants. We'll see if he does that against Seattle. And also... I need to see how Dallas performs when they're coming from behind as opposed to having the lead in the game. And they're a completely different team when you put them in that situation. We saw that with the Colts game. They got down. It might have been uh, 7 or 10 points. And they had to play a different game to try to get back into it. And then that's when the turnovers started happening. So we'll, we'll see. And then the other prop, the other thing that kind of evens this match out matchup out for me is they both get sacked at an insane rate. Deshaun Watson got sacked 62 times this season, but Russell Wilson has got sacked 51 times to Dax 56 times. They're both getting hit way more than they should. They both have suspect lines. Dallas has more talent on their line, but they haven't been playing up to their talent level. You've had Zach Martin banged up. Tyron Smith has been banged up. And Dak has a propensity to hold on to the ball too long and he takes too many hits. And we've seen the fumbles and the turnovers from him holding on to the ball too long. And the question to me is going to be, can that Dallas front seven get to Russell Wilson? Which I think they can. They have a ferocious front seven. You have Gregory and you have Demarcus Lawrence and then you have uh, Banner Esch at middle linebacker kind of filling in the gap for the injured Sean Lee and they are a very good front seven their secondary while not great they're pretty solid and they do well in coverage so the question is are are they going to be able to stop that run game and be able to get to Russell Wilson enough to force him into mistakes I think they'll be able to get to him here and there, but I don't see them forcing the critical mistakes that can swing the momentum of a game. On the flip side, Dak, he fumbles a lot. And they have, um, I'm looking here, and and the Cowboys have 10 fumbles um, in the rushing game. 
And the Seahawks, I'm looking at their defense, they have 21 forced fumbles, 14 fumble recoveries. So, and I've seen that fumble the, the ball a lot as well. So you have a team that has a propensity to turn, to turn the ball over against a team that has the propensity to force t- fumbles and recover them. That's a recipe for disaster. And he holds the ball too long. Next point. Will Seattle be able to slow down Zeke Elliott? He has been on fire down the stretch. And that rushing game has been rolling in Dallas. If not, I think that Dak could really be able to implement the play action game. The bootlegs running outside the pocket. And really be able to have some success against the Seahawks. So that's going to be... Um, a big point of emphasis for the Seattle defense. So with all that being said, I look at this game and I see it being a very close game, Seattle being on the road in Dallas. But I see Seattle winning this game 21-20, to a very close game, and I see Russell Wilson being the difference. I see both run games being very effective, both for Dallas and for the Seahawks. I see both defenses playing very tough against the pass for each team, but I see Russell Wilson making two to three more impactful plays in this game that will be the separating and deciding factor for for this matchup. And I think that Dak and that offense may have one turnover that may cost them the game, but I don't see a huge amount of separation between either of these teams. So that's my prediction for this game. 21-20 21-20 to 20 Seattle at Jerry World. So that's my prediction for these two games today. I'm actually going to keep this video pretty brief. I'm going to cover uh, tomorrow's game between between the Chargers and the Ravens at uh, 1 o'clock. And the Eagles and the Bears, which is obviously the one that I'm most interested in, at 425. So I'll probably be dropping a video, um, I would say around noon tomorrow. And then at 4 o'clock, uh, I will be live on Facebook. Um, just kind of giving my last thoughts on the Eagles game. You know, as me and my buddies are kind of like, you know, throwing out our last minute predictions and whatnot. Some people may flip flop. I'm going to do my best not to. But that's it for now. Let me know what you think. And um, leave your, your comments in, in the... Uh, just leave your comments below. <laughs> Let me know if there are other things you would want to hear me talk about. And um, make sure you tune in for the next video tomorrow, 12 p.m., 12 noon. Make sure you tune in. As always, appreciate the support. Signing out. Salute.